Welcome to Alias Teacher TV. Today it's a lesson about using Reform Tool and Retopo Tool. We have a scan as the underlying geometry here, and we want to build a sub D from that scan. So with Reform, I can immediately create a first approach. And when it calculates, it uses 50% of the points. In this case, it's 3000 points, so 1500 are taken uh, in the algorithm and it creates a number of 10 faces. So one, two, three, and so on. That should be 10. Not really, to be honest, it looks a bit more. Um, the second thing is I have a curvature bias. So the curvature bias just takes care that when it's strongly shaped, that there are more of these uh, CVs and if it's flat, then they are less. So that's, that's what it's about. But as you can see, it's not perfect right from the beginning. So what should I do now to get a better result, a more yeah, a realistic result, better topology? I go into Retopo, edit in Retopo, and then I change, of course, the corner here. So I just delete that one, and then I move the points approximately to where I want them. And then I put some additional points and additional faces, and that looks much better here in the corner. And to get it more regular, I can use the right mouse button and to relax the conditions here for the CVs and also move some points additionally a little bit. And with shift, I get additional edge loops in this area to go closer to this corner. So the boundary has to be maybe cut off or something that can be done later. So in the, in this case, so you can even drop out of, of, of the uh, two commands and pick the CVs here, um, the ones which, which are there and make a slide to get the shape first straight. And then we project that boundary and cut it off. What I would, uh, would do. All right, second exercise. For and here we go. Um, we have that cover and you can see it's a scan again. And I want to create a surface with reform tool. And in this case, it's a bit different than the first exercise because we have a feature line. So double click on reform. And I have 50 again and 20 in this case because 10 is of course not enough. And I build. And that is a quite nice approach, I think, uh, for the first thing. Because when you look at it, <clears throat> not that many faces and also the layout is not completely wrong. So I can just edit it again. That's always the first thing I would do. And then I take a, a throw away the corner here and put the corner and you together in, for, with weld. So I, do, I go both points on top of each other and then we have that and we can add another edge loop and we can slide those edge loops a bit more. So the distribution looks better and with the right mouse button I can even here uh, get the shape better. All right, so now next thing is another of these strange triangles. Again, throw away put it on top of each other and weld it and with shift add additional edge loops. And that's it. So I, th I would leave that one. But what is more important and more interesting in this exercise is how to get a uh, feature line there and how to get a crease and so on. And what we can do now is with control alt. So here cut an additional line here. So I go there and put points in between to be able to follow the feature here let's say until there and when i got that one now i can immediately crease this one so i go to edge loop and say crease and check it in shading model what happens we have crease and it follows here, but it's not nice here. All the creases in alias uh, up till version 2023 had that yeah, S-type 
area or S type ending, um, which is not nice. So now there is a new command which I can just demonstrate to you, uh, and that's modify crease. So if I go back to uh, the model, and if I pick the last, or pick the whole crease, and I say modify crease, nothing happens, and it's red. And that's what I want to show you because it happened to me a lot of times when I used it the first time and I didn't understand how it works. Um, if you want to get rid of this strange behavior at the end, you need some relax area. And if you need a relax area, you can't have a completely uh, creased uh, edge loop. You need a part of the edge loop which is relaxed and relaxed means smooth. So I pick the edge here and make it smooth again and crease it. And now when I take this edge loop here from sharp to smooth, that's the relax area and that's what we need. So if I take that and we go to modify crease again, now suddenly it works and I can influence how it works. So if I go there, um, I can say three edges are taken to make it from sharp to smooth. So if I go to toggle model again, you can see that looks a lot better than before. I, I have to switch it off, otherwise we can't see. So now there is not this hook, hooked area anymore. It's sharp and then it fades out here in this area. Toggle the model again and now I do an align the curve. And that's, that's what happens when I pick the first CV, this one, and the last one we shift. And I do an align to curve, generate curve. Now I have a curve to be able to influence the feature line. Um, and I can do a move norm, normal, so it can go up, I can go down, go up, go down. And also with last point, I can influence that last point too. So I go there and see what's happening when I go movement. So it's, it's, that's a bit diff tricky to, to influence in this case here. If you want, you can just put a real surface fillet on top of, so that's, that's hybrid modeling in this case, would do a quarter one, small value, form factor 0 0.7, let's say. And then I take all the ones which are sharp and fill the fillet. So I need maybe edge a line. And that's it. Total model. Yeah, it's a bit too tiny here in this case. And here I forgot that default was not correct, so I need edge align there too. So I go into command again, query edit, and a big value, five, let's say, six. And here we said we want to have edge align and update. So now that should look better if I toggle the model again. approximately what I wanted. All right, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching that video.